Joining me is the 2009 and now three-time FLW Tour Angler of the Year, Clark Wentland. Clark, take us back to last season. It didn't look like the start of the championship year, but the third place finish at Beaver Lake helped put you in a place that if you finished well at the final event on Lake Champlain, you had a chance to be the Angler of the Year. What were you thinking of going into the final tournament? Well, I tell you what, that final tournament at Champlain was going to be a tough one. There was three guys uh, that all had a chance, Luke Clawson and Brent Erler and myself. And, and I knew it was going to take a top 10. And I actually kind of gambled in that tournament. And things worked out well on the gamble. I, I went to an area of that lake, uh, even though I fished it a lot of times, that I've never been to before. And, uh, you know, things worked out. I finished seventh in the last event and, and angry of the year. So it was a great year. So what did it mean to you both personally and professionally to win your third FLW Tour Angler of the Year title? Well, it's a goal that I've kind of got going into the year every year. Now, you know, you, you've got a lot that, that happens throughout a year, and, and every event's really got to be good. I mean, what the Angler of the Year is is just, just consistency, and uh, it's the best fishermen that fish the best throughout the whole year. Um, so I kind of have that goal, but a lot can go wrong. And so, you know, as the year evolved, um, you know, things went fairly good early in the season, and then we got to Beaver Lake. I believe that was the fourth event. I finished third in it, and, you know, I was up fairly high in the, in the points race. I, I don't know if I ever had a lead. I might have had a lead going in the last tournament, but it was only by one or two points. So, you know, basically you just got to go out and do the best you can in every event, but, you know, that's always a goal going into the season. Now, you didn't make the cut at the Forest Wood Cup in Pittsburgh. How tough is it to compete against some of the best in the business? Uh, do you keep to yourself, or are you friends all with everybody on tour? Well, we're all friends. Um, you know, the, I've got a guy that I work with, Mike Sermon, and he and I kind of spend a lot of time together and we talk, but really everyone else I, I don't really talk with very much. And, you know, you got somebody you can trust, you basically... Uh, you know, touch base with them now and then and, and just kind of see if there's a pattern you're missing. Um, I've done it every way. I've done it by myself and I've done it trying to network more, but you know, it's hard. You got to really find people that you can trust and work with. Um, the Forest Wood Cup didn't go very good last year, but, but uh, you know, it, it, every tournament can't go well. Um, it, I didn't think I made any, any big, big errors, but it just, you know, one of those tournaments that just didn't really work out very well. Now, you've been quoted as saying that uh, 2005 was probably the absolute worst season of your entire fishing career. Can you talk to us about your struggles and how tough it was to turn your career around to get back into competition? Well, you know, the, the 2005 was a really rough year for me. I didn't, I didn't catch very many fish. Um, you know, I, I started going from making checks in most every event to falling to the bottom of the field. And... Um, I didn't really know exactly what was going on. As, as it's kind of evolved and, and I, I kind of broke out of that, I, I kind of have realized that I got a little bit too set in my ways. I mean, what I was doing is, is basically just trying to do the same, same thing that I had done to get to that point. And, and the youth in the sport and the youth in anything come in and, and change things up and, and kind of change the playing field a little bit. And so in today's fishing, competitive fishing world, um, if you're not willing to change and willing to use the internet to your advantage and willing to, uh, you know, try to stay up with the new techniques that are out there, I think you just get passed up. And so that's really one of the major things that kind of I brought in and that I think that's really helped my fishing a lot. So looking ahead to this season, uh, how familiar are you with uh, some of the tour stops this year? Hey, I'm pretty familiar with a lot of these tour stops. Um, you know, I think it's a great schedule. Uh, there's been some format changes where we're going to fish a cumulative weight all the way until the end of the tournament instead of instead of making a big cut. I think that's going to really benefit the, the good fishermen. It's also going to be three days um, before we cut. And so, um, you know, a two-day tournament, you bring in a lucky bite. A three-day tournament, you, you don't. You, you, you're really going to get rid of that one lucky bite. You're, you're going to have to have consistency through the event. And, I like the, the stops we're going to, starting you know at the Red River in Shreveport and, and uh, going all the way through and ending up at Gunnersville. And I'm familiar with some of these lakes and uh, a couple of them I'm, I've not fished very much, but, um, but I think it's going to be a good schedule and look forward to the year. So Clark, do you think it's better going in cold or being familiar with the area and knowing what to expect going in? I, you know, I really think going in cold is fine. I, I, I don't mind uh, not knowing. I want to know the basics about the lake. I just kind of want to know what kind of fish I'm going to have to catch and what the main forage in the lake is. But, 
But the patterns change from year to year. If you go in with just a ton of familiarity to a place, um, one example for FLW is we go to Beaver Lake every year. That lake, that venue gets tough for, for me and a lot of guys just because you want to rely on the patterns that you had the year before. And, and that just doesn't work in fishing. It doesn't matter if you're there the exact same week generally something's going to be different and you're going to have to key on something different and and uh, you know as long as you know that going in and you've learned your lesson which i've learned a lot of lessons on that in the past trying to come back to the same pattern so um you know i don't mind if it's a place i hadn't fished that much or or one that i, ha I have fished a lot I'm, I'm going to go out and just try to figure out what the fish are doing for that event this year's forest wood cup is being held on lake lanier in georgia what do you know about fishing there you know, I've fished there a couple of times. Uh, I've only fished there once since there was blueback heron, which is the dominant forage there now. And blueback heron really changed the lake up a lot. It's a, it's a forage fish that um, allowed the fish to grow really well, but they, they, are, they have just different habits than shad do. And so, um, you know, I know a little bit, but I think it's going to be a neat venue for, for an event. You'll have both largemouth, you'll have spots, um, you know, spotted bass being the dominant, but largemouth could play into it. and. I think it's going to be a great tournament. Um, we're going to catch a lot of fish, even though it's it's in the summer, uh, you know, in August. But I think it'll it'll be a really good event. Clark, congratulations on your third FLW Tour Angler of the Year title. Is there uh, anyone in particular out there you want to thank? Um, yeah, I tell you what, I'd really like to thank. Uh, I've been with um, Kellogg's now for about ten years, and I'd like to thank them. We've had some great times together and they've been just a wonderful sponsor but uh but now i'm moving on i'm going to cabela's and um you know i'm looking forward to that relationship cabela's is is kind of about all things outdoors and and uh, that's kind of where i'm at also and so um i'd like to thank them and, and then yamaha and ranger and, and flw outdoors I, I, they've been uh, they've been great for fishing and and i just look forward to another good year clark thank you for joining us on wfn news and uh, the best of luck this year thanks so much i appreciate you having me Taking a look at the 2010 FLW Tour schedule, the tour consists of six stops in six states. The four-day tournaments feature a cumulative weight format with the top five anglers from the first three days advancing to the fourth and final day. The schedule builds up to the Forest Wood Cup in August, taking place on Lake Lanier in Atlanta, Georgia. The winner of the Forest Wood Cup takes home half a million dollars. Checking out the Skeeter Bass Champs results from this past week, the number one tournament trail in Texas. The East Division got underway on the Sam Rayburn Reservoir. The team of Pete Shivers and Doyle Tibbetts beat over 500 anglers with a five fish combined weight of 19.12 pounds to take first place and top prize of $20,000. Competition was tied in this one day tournament. Ties for second and fourth rounded out the top five. They were all within two pounds of each other. Central Division is next to get underway on February 6th on Lake Belton.